Now then, you beautiful people, thank you for joining us once again. We have got a tool comparison for you today. It is the Top Tez gas leak detectors, the PT520B and the PT520A. So let's check this out and see what the two main differences are between these two gas leak detectors. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to open both boxes up, see what's inside, see what you get in, inside the boxes, and then we're going to go into more detail about what we get in the B model and what we get in the A model, and then compare them, see what the differences are. Let's do them both at the same time, and then you get a bit of a comparison. So inside the A, which is this side, you get a box like so, a nice hard case, and you get the same in the B. So it's light for light, cases, hard shell, going to protect it inside the van. So inside the B, like so, inside the A, light for light. So you get your user instructions, you get your gas leak detector itself, and you also get a charging lead. Both devices are rechargeable, which is great. You're not having to carry batteries around with you all the time. It's going to make things a lot easier. They are a standard USB to USB. Um, it's the USB-C, if I remember rightly. Let's have a look at the two devices and see what the main visual differences are. Both devices come with a 17-inch long spout neck, and you can use that to get round corners. So both, both are 17 inches, both exactly the same length. The nozzles at the end are identical. They look to be exactly the same. On the front and the screens, so your button wise, you've got on your B, seems to have more options. You've got your sensitivity on one button, where on the A, you've got your sensitivities across three buttons. So you've got your low, mid and high. Your sensitivity is just on your B, is just the one button which you'll press multiple times to change the setting. Then you've got, you can switch between your parts per million levels, and then you've got your LEL percentage levels. LEL, if you didn't know, is basically a measurement to measure how combustible a gas is compared to the air. So how likely it is to, to explode, basically. On both devices, you have a mute the alarm button, so you can, if you get that, that beeping after a while, once you've found the leak, that beeping can become annoying. So you can mute that with that button. You've got an APO on the A model, and that is an auto power off. So you can turn that on or off as you please, and after 10 minutes, that will auto automatically turn the device off. The B comes with that enabled from default, so that will turn off after 10 minutes regardless. At the bottom of the B, you can zero out your machine and you can also measure the Celsius and Fahrenheit of the fumes or the gas uh, that it is measuring. Basically, what I'm getting from that without open, out turning the device on is I've got more control over on my B than I have my A. So initially, I'm thinking that possibly the B is for more of, of an engineer, someone a lot more of a professional, rather than the A model, which is just like more of an entry level sort of gas leak detector. So let's power them up and see what the screens look like. So what we're gonna do now is power both the um, models up at the same time and see how quickly each one gets to full operation, how quickly we can operate this in an emergency so we can identify a leak as quick as possible. So if we hold both buttons in, they'll both beep. And then let's have a look at the screen. So the B model is giving me a countdown in seconds. So it's counting down from 30. It's got a nice bright screen. I think it's an LED screen. And then on the A model, we've just got, it's the same motion of the, the red, uh, yellow and uh, green, but we're just getting a weight. We're not getting a countdown of the seconds there. Um, we're down to eight seconds now, so we, I like that I can see and I know exactly how long I'm waiting, where with the A, I'm not, I don't know how long. So we've got a beep there. So the B is a lot quicker. Yeah, that's a, a lot quicker because the A is still not ready. There we go, a beep there now. The B machine is a lot quicker than the A. So if you're in a rush, the B, a, uh, the B one is for you. So on the screens, there's, they look very similar, but there's two, well, there's a, there's a few main differences. So 
tell you what, let's get you, let's pull you a bit closer and show you the screens itself. So as you can see on the screens there, they're very similar, but different at the same time. You've got this little rainbow, this green, yellow and red on both screens. You've got your power and your sound symbol in your top left hand corner. At the bottom is where we've got our differences though. So you can see here on the left, we've got a sensitivity high, which is on our B model and on our a model, our sensitivity high is in the bottom right hand corner. So let's change the settings on both and see how it changes. So on the B model, if we click it, it goes straight down to low sensitivity. So on the B, we've only got high and low sensitivity, where on the A, we have a medium sensitivity and a low sensitivity. So we'll change them both back to high and then let's do the mute button. So press the, if we press the mute button on both models, our sound disappears. If we click them back and bring them both back up, we've also got then our power symbol at the top left hand corners. If we press the auto power off button, that then disappears on the A model. But on the B, like I said before, it is a it is factory set to be automatically powered down after 10 minutes. So we'll turn that back on. On the B model, which gives you more readings, more options where we can measure the LEL percentage um, and then we can also measure our parts per million by clicking the middle button there. You then also measure your temperatures in Celsius which is 17.4 and then we've got our Fahrenheit at 63.2. It's quick, I like that you can, when you press a button it beeps so in fact let's try, if we turn the volume off it still does it still beeps when you press the buttons but it when you're when you're picking up a um a trace of gas the alarm will not go off you've also lastly got a zero you can zero out your readings on there so don't think you can do it on this on the temperature but on your readings here if I press zero, you're going to have zero come up there. It's going to then zero out your readings and you can start again. You're not having to wait and pull it into fresh air to get it to reset itself before going again. You can actually got a button to do that, which is, I think is a really good option to have. So what we'll do now is we're going to go try them out basically in a real world situation. So we're going to go to a gas meter, crack the gas nipple on the meter and then Get them both set up and go towards the gas nipple and see which picks it up first. See which one's got more sensitivity, which um, which can pick it up the quickest, basically. Because we want, as gas engineers, we want to be able to. We don't. We shouldn't have to get it bang on the leak to find the gas leak. We should be able to pick it up and get some sort of detection pretty close, or not even so close. Good, good maybe 30 centimetres away, it starts picking up a, a, a reading. But when we get closer to the actual leak itself, it should be going off the scale into the red on each device. So let's go to real, real world situation and see how we get on. So we'll start with the A model. Uh, what we'll do, I've just cracked the nut on there. So that's loosened off. What we'll do is we'll start from here and see when it starts to pick it up. There we go, as soon as we've got to it basically, so there was no distance. That's on high sensitivity as well. So what we'll do is we'll try it on the B model now. We'll wait till that stops uh, beeping. There we go. So we'll do the same with the B model, see if it picks it up any sooner. So same there. You can see it gives you a numerical value. So. It, it picked it up when it was close, but on, on this model you can zero. I think that's a great feature to have, you don't have to wait for it to zero, zero itself out. There we go. So you have got to be quite close to the leak to find it. So there's no difference really in the sensitivity. Both picking up close to the leak you're not getting a, a reading when you're far, far away from it, basically. Right, to conclude on the two gas leak detectors, what are the main differences? What do I like? What don't I like? To be honest, there's not a lot I don't like. In fact, there's probably nothing I don't like. Probably the only thing that I would say that I would like an option of is that could put my own batteries into them. If it's died and I haven't got time to, to recharge it, I'd like the option maybe to put some AAA, AA batteries in there, but you can't do that on these, unfortunately. So that's the only disadvantage I have for the two models, because they're both the same. However, I think they're great products. They're both very different. So basically, I think the A is an entry-level gas leak detector, where the B, I think, is more of 
a professional uh, for more of an engineer who's wanting to measure the parts per millions, they're wanting to measure the uh, LEL percentages to measure how combustible uh, um, a, the gas is, uh, wanting to measure the temperature. I think the B is for you rather than the A. But if you're just uh, getting into the trade and you want it in a gas leak detector um, that's going to find you a gas leak, then the top tears. PT520A is the model for you. So if you are in the market for one of these and you have enjoyed the video and you think this product may be for you, please do click the link in the description below. Top Tears have given me a discount code. It's for 10%. I will put it um, in the description below. Uh, so do make sure you use that. It, this is me giving back to you as a thank you for watching the video. If you have got any queries or any questions, please drop us a comment or message me directly by email, uh, Instagram, however you want to contact me. I, I'm happy to answer any questions you've got on these, um, these gas leak detectors. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button and please do not to... Do, blah, 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 get my words out, put your teeth back in Macaulay. Please do not forget to subscribe. I know a lot of you are watching and not subscribing. So please do hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost a penny. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again next time for another tool review.